this video is not going to be the most pleasant video for you to watch because I'm about to tell you some very hard truths. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude Mental Gym. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. So have you guys ever had a conversation with someone, a family member or a sibling, a friend, and then you just felt like really confused with the conversation and you're like, hmm this just didn't sound right you end up feeling confused about your emotions you end up feeling confused about decisions that you just made a lot of people think that being manipulated is only limited to like spousal like intimate relationships they tend to disregard that parents can be the biggest manipulators as well as siblings people we care about our friends and of course our relationships but even at work and in our social circles we can be manipulated if someone will allow themselves to be used or manipulated even the best people will take the bait and manipulate them and use them if you are a yes person yes person all the time there's good people that will take advantage of that okay people naturally instinctively use people that makes themselves easy to be used it's a terrible thing to say right think about this with yourself how many times you needed to do something when you need to do something or get something done and your mind comes a list that's like five or ten people that you could call right and you always call the person first that is most likely to say yes or be available if i'm lying tell me i'm lying but we use people every day we avoid the people that we know will probably say no or not be able to come through where it would take us a little bit more work to convince them right but the people that's at the top of our list are always the people that we feel will say yes first now imagine if that person said yes to everything there's gonna come a point you see you're always calling them to have them come do something for you and that person may have an issue with people pleasing. That person may have an issue with saying no. They may be going through our own thing and poor them. You're just out here using them. <laughs> I'm not here to make you feel bad because we all fall trapped to that. I fall prey to that. Of course, I'm going to call the person that's most likely to say yes. But this is for anyone that say, no, I don't use people. I don't do that. That's not what I mean by that. Hard truth is that you have to be the last person that people call. You're going to be like, Kareen, what? What? Yes, that's the number one way to not be manipulated. You have to become the very last option for everyone in your life. And I'm gonna give y'all my own testimonials on why that changed. And I know if you watch my channel, you're like, but you're Christian, you're speaking about God. I'm gonna show you how even in the Bible, this is biblical. The number one sign that you're being manipulated is when the person emotionally manipulates you. And when someone's trying to emotionally manipulate you, they tap into your emotions. Example number one, because I did a video that says I'm not a ni nice person way back. I put in the end cards for you to watch. But example number one is that they tap into your emotions. They will use guilt tripping. Guys, I tell you, I was a person that someone said to me when they were going through something that if I stopped helping them, what's the point of them living? They're going to end their life. I'm telling you that is emotional manipulation. And this wasn't a relationship like a lover. This wasn't that. That's why I tell you, those are not the only people that can manipulate you. It wasn't a guy I was with. I thank God I was never with a guy that ever played me like that. But they tug at you because you're like, this is someone close to you. But this was the m emotional manipulation that was happening that it felt like if I couldn't, God forbid I couldn't help this person out this month, then they're going to emotionally make me feel responsible for whatever happens to them to the point where they wouldn't even try to put an effort into helping themselves because they're like, I have this person here that's going to rescue me from doing anything for myself or helping myself. And so I became that reliable person that's just here to take care of them. Oh, and if I stopped, they lose all hope in life. They might as well die. They have no one extra. This person wouldn't sacrifice nothing for me. They haven't sacrificed anything for me. And it's not that you do for others for what they can do for you, but Sometimes in life, the people that hurt us the most that care, say you ever had a parent that abandoned you, like in many breakdowns that I've done on my other channel celebrities, most of the dads were absent from their child's life, their whole childhood. The minute they became famous and had money, that's when you see the dads pop up, right? Or the moms even, they'll pop up and try to be in their lives again and be invested. And then now you come with guilt trips to make me feel like if I don't take care of you or I owe you something when you've abandoned me. 
I, you've abandoned me. But now that I am, you know, this person, then it's kind of like that guilt trip. People will do that to you. I knew somebody that I, cause these experiences brought me to this place, but I knew somebody that I would text her something that's going on we just needing advice help or comfort she would not respond she would not respond to that she'd be days don't care don't respond to me. but the minute i text her something her related or to help her with something with her stuff responds immediately i can always count on her to respond immediately when it's about her but when it's me texting something me related nothing or they just didn't see it or whatever the case is i started peeping that i'm like i don't like that i don't like that but this same person, if they need you for something, quick, quick response, you'll find them, okay? And the thing is, I stopped responding right away to people like that too and being like, you know what? Okay, I'm not gonna be, the reason why people can emotionally tug at you because you have a people-pleasing mentality and you want to please everyone around you. You want to win validation from everyone. So therefore, you put yourself in these positions where you can't say no, because oh my goodness, they're not gonna like me, especially if you had an absent parent, an absent mom, an absent father, and you're like, you were hurt your whole childhood because they weren't present, now they finally come around. You wanna, some people either be really cold and can never forgive them, or you have the people that are like determined to please them, so you start telling them about all your accomplishments. And that's a mistake, because once you start telling them all your accomplishments, oh, I have this degree, or oh, I'm doing good for myself, I'm taking care of myself, I'm doing it, all this without your help. They're listening to you not to even uplift you and be like, wow, look at what my child has accomplished and this and that. They're listening to you like, dang, cash grab oh let me get close to her so she could help me out they don't care about your accomplishments they don't care they didn't even reach out to you they do not care about your accomplishments you have to hear that one of the tough things i've heard a friend tell another friend that i agreed with was like she told her your dad don't love you he doesn't care about you he's just looking for financial stability and it was just like a ha moment right it'd be like that it be like that. And they'll manipulate you with the whole thing. Now, if you've been in a relationship where the guy's telling you he's gonna end his life, doing weird stuff to him, manipulation. Same with the woman. Women will cry when they know they're forcing the tears so that they could get their way. Manipulation, children do it. They know they're in trouble. They already start crying. They start blaming stuff. There's a lot of ways they tug at your own emotions, your guilt to make you feel guilt. You know, like a guy will cheat on you and then tell you stuff like, um, well, you wasn't around, I felt unheard, or this and that and the third. Okay, if you felt that unhappy in the relationship, why didn't you just leave? Why did you decide to cheat? Why did you decide to do this? It's a gaslighting to tug at your emotions and blame you for their lack of discipline. Vice versa, a woman will step out and be like, well, I felt like you didn't notice me, you didn't give me attention, I needed attention, right? That's what women do. But sis, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you leave? Why you allowed yourself to do that? You cannot blame someone for your lack of self-control. You either express it, you lay down your standards, your boundaries, or you leave. All of those things are manipulation and it goes both ways. Next is if the person tries to remove you from everyone in your life, be careful with that. Whether it's a family member, like there's family members that create divide. If you talk to one person, hey, delete all these people number, don't talk to them, don't communicate with them. You're manipulative because why can't I talk to all of these people? Because you have problems with them, right? Friends would do that either. I don't like, and I know people with childish, it's a very childish mentality to be like, if you're loyal to me, you can't talk to this person that did nothing to you. I don't do that stuff. Even my best friend, there's been people I didn't necessarily rock with like that. I never gave her ultimatum. Either you talk to me or this person make a choice. Never like that. Now there are situations if it's hard enough, but there's petty stuff. Like you fell out because of petty disagreements or whatever, girl, don't be my friend then because I'm not going to help you hate someone that did nothing to me, right? But if there's something like if, you know, you're my married friend and this girl just came and slept with your husband or something, of course, we're no longer friends, darling. We're no longer friends. You know what I mean? But if it's just like a disagreement over something stupid, but there's family members that manipulate you into picking sides and then once they make up, you're left in the lurch. And you've ever seen couples try to make you pick a side and then once they make up, they hate you, they turn against you. 
And people know if they isolate you, like if a man or a woman, because there's women that isolate men from their families too. We've seen movies, stories, true crime or whatever. They know if they isolate you from people that genuinely care about you and can see through their BS, then that means they'll no longer have control over you and they can never, they can no longer dictate you or tell you how to feel, etc. It's easier to manipulate you and control you if you're isolated from the people that would be able to get you out of that manipulation if you catch my drift. They get you to apologize instead of taking accountability. Oh my goodness, I can't stress this enough. Like one thing I've learned from, I don't remember what book it was. It's from some book. I've read so many books here on the book club. I don't recall what it was, where it was, but it was saying that a lot of people, once you tell them that, hey, why did you lie about this? You know, you holding them accountable, then they flip, manipulate you and be like, oh, I know I'm such a bad person. I'm such a liar. I'm such this, that like that victim thing where now they start doing a self-loathing thing to where now you start to apologize. Like, no, that's not true. Blah, 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 manipulation. Somebody would say, I'm so ugly, I'm so fat, waiting for you to light them up with compliments. Manipulation, okay? Anytime someone tells me, I'm like, why did you lie about that? Oh, I know, I'm the liar, I'm always the bad guy, I'm always this, that. I was like, in this instant, you were. You were a liar, you were a bad guy. That's how you break that manipulation. Don't apologize. They were. You ever see somebody hurt you so bad and you're apologizing to them for them hurting you? Wake up, wake up. Be like, yeah, you were bad in this instance. You were toxic, you did lie. Why did you lie? Hold yourself accountable. Don't do this victim thing. Don't fall for that. Or they'll be like, oh, I have a headache or do the sickness in the middle of you talking. I can't go through this right now. I have so much going on. Okay, well, we're all going through stuff in life. But this topic, I want to stay on it because then you shut down. When someone tells you they sick, you shut down, right? Who parents would do that too. Another one is when you talk about your problems and they want up your problems. Telling the person, oh, today I feel a little sick, a little cold. And then you hear, yeah, well, um, this, that, and the third happened to me, that's worse. <laughs> and you're like, I really can't, I have X, Y, this. Yeah, but you know, and they keep going, explaining their situation. And it's like a one up every time. It's like there is the tugging at emotions again, the guilt. <laughs> I can't stress this up. It's like they've always been through worse. It's a competition of who's had it worse. And then when they say something mean to you, like they hurt your feelings, it's always, you can't take a joke. Oh, I, I didn't even mean it like that. It was da 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 da, you're, you're too sensitive. You're taking things too personally. Y'all just too sensitive. Yeah, they play on your sensitivity. That is emotional abuse, I'm telling you guys. Like, if you hurt me and I'm telling you, hey, when you said this, you sat across my face and you said X, Y, Z, that hurt me. And the person's like, what's, what, that was not met that way. You're just sensitive. What's the problem? I met that. If someone says something like, hey, I'm in my life because of this and you're calling them out and then they try to just say, oh, you're too sensitive. That's not how I meant it. You took it out of context. People always take things out of context once you call them out, right? They'll be like, oh, you took it out of context, please. You don't even know what context means. And you're telling me I took something out of context. That's the number one excuse once you start to call out people's manipulations is that you took it out of context. Next thing is they make you sound very unreasonable, which goes with the sensitivity. Like you're genuinely upset and they're making it sound, they're gaslighting you in a sense like, what is da, 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 you doing too much and this you're you're overreacting i saw this quote let me find it right now because i saved it on instagram where victor frankel said an abnormal reaction to an abnormal situation is normal behavior listen don't tell me i'm overreacting because what you're you just did is abnormal that's not normal that's toxic that's manipulation so i'm gonna have an abnormal reaction you lying about this is not normal. Lying is not normal. So do not tell me that if I'm upset, I'm having an abnormal reaction. That's gaslighting. And even with your parents, you abandoning your child or you not being there with your child, for some people it might not even be abandonment. It's like if a parent, say, your parent got remarried and then they chose their spouse, and those new kids over you and your, you know, parent, your mom's kids or whatever, or your dad, whatever the case may be, and they didn't care a lick about you. And then once you try to explain that to them, and it's like, you're overreacting. Yeah, I'm overreacting. Oh, I'm not letting it go, the emotions. Yeah, I'm not gonna let, that's an abnormal thing for a child to go through. We weren't created to just, to not be in a two parent home. So it's okay for the child to be frustrated with you and you making them sound like, 
you know they're just trying to blame you for stuff or they're just like holding people accountable is like this big sin don't fall for that keep your foot like I, yes you can forgive but you got to keep your foot on people's necks with holding them accountable because if you don't if you let them win in just that one aspect and i know i've done books uh book clubs on how to win friends and influence people and all that but say this to all say with the manipulation that the number one way is to get to you emotionally and make you feel bad and make you feel like you're tripping you're overreacting you're sensitive or you're not helpful or you're a horrible person and it's just bad and with the people pleasing the bible does not call for us to be doormats to be used like god even talks about multiplying your assets in several bible verses yes you can help other people but but I always say charity, when God speaks about charity, he's not speaking about your 30 year old son that refuses to get a job and lives in your basement and is mooching off of you. That's not what God means by taking care of your family and your relatives. They refuse to go to school, refuse to work. They, all they do is play games. They're not even streaming to make money from that, okay? That is not charity. That is someone mooching off of you or that parent that is still young, can work, can take care of themselves and not feel all entitled. They weren't even in your life and then now they see you doing well and they feel like you're gonna be, you're gonna get them to retirement. When you yourself are still trying to figure out, you're still trying to make it in life and make certain decisions to be okay. That is not what God meant by charity. He means helping the literal homeless, the widowed, you know, the orphan, people that need it. If you just want to be a kind person, go and be kind to people that actually need it, not people that's using you. And why I say be the last person for everyone, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, guys. Like when people call you, I have this role. So I'm really genuinely busy. So I can't always pick up for people. I would have a million text messages and I can't always respond. As you see, I upload three three days a week on my other channel and two days a week here. It takes a lot of work, a lot of editing, a lot of prep, writing scripts, preparation and stuff like that. So I am always genuinely busy. But when I get a call, especially if I know it's from people that are probably just you know what I mean? Gonna manipulate me into something. I wait at least one to two hours before ever calling them back or texting back. Sometimes it'll be a day or whatever. Cause whatever emergency you have, make sure I'm the last option. And if it's really that important, text me. Let me see if I can do it, <laughs> okay? But people know too, if you're still struggling with saying no, learn not to pick up the phone. That's a quick tip. Because I was a people pleaser that couldn't say no. It was a real hindrance for me. And I'll tell you guys that people pleasing can even make you lose your salvation because Oftentimes we want to please people so much to where we can't say no, we can't turn away, that we end up in situations, places, and relationships that are not godly, that God doesn't want for us because we don't know how to get out of them because we're people pleasing, that we start to put other people's needs and validation before the word of God. And God tells us that to not put family, friends, spouse, or kids before him. And people pleasing will do that to you. So that's not even him. Where you can't say no, your friends want to hang out someplace you don't want to hang out, you feel your spirit doesn't align with, but you don't want to be the person in the group. You know what I mean? There's something that don't align, even if your parents is serving two spirits. Like I pray, I'm doing this. And then, you know, especially if you're a Haitian kid, not every Haitian, I could be Christian. And there's people in my family that aren't Christian that serve spirits. I tell you that, that happens. It's not wild <laughs> when you're Haitian. I be trying to tell y'all that. You praying to God, you, you know, baptize and all that. And then you have families that worship other gods that serve them, that pray to them, that do um, their little rituals to them. And your spirits just don't align. But now this person may want you to come have dinner with them where that's all they're talking about. They're talking about that and bringing that energy and spirit around you. And then you, because that's a close family member of this, you don't want to hurt their feelings. You want to get close to them, but that's the only topic they talk about. You have to say no, because the Bible said, do not sit amongst the wicked. And I'm not calling anyone wicked, but this is a whole nother spiritual, deeply spiritual outside of this realm conversation that I'm having. If you can relate, you can relate, okay? You cannot sit with someone that serves something else and you're trying to, they're starting to talk to you about that and you're entertaining it where you're not even standing up for God and saying, hey, this is what I believe. I don't mind having a, because Jesus sat with sinners, but he did not sin with them. 
People think sitting with sinners mean you have to sin with them. Where you can say, hey, I don't mind talking to you, having a relationship with you, but one thing I cannot do and will do is entertain these type of conversations. They're not good for my spirit. And or if you're going back and forth with them to get to the point where it's easier for them to get you over to that side than for you to get them to that side. If you're gonna be showing the love of Christ, their family, you gotta be there with them, be there with them, but tell them where, hey, I'm not having these conversations. I don't care for these topics. I don't wanna talk about these topics. And if they don't respect you, cut it off. But there's a lot of people pleasers that won't even stand up for God because you don't want to offend people. You don't want to. I used to be one of those people. Like I said, I'm, I'm oh, my goodness. you have no idea. Conversations, places, things, people that I should have been cut off out of my life. But I was so stuck on not hurting feelings that I was drowning. I was drowning in it. And you get into financial debt. In my other video, I said I'm not a nice person and friends will put you in debt. I owed, I, I'm not even gonna get into that, but I owed such a large lump sum of money because of what I was doing for people that I was to the point, that's how deep, this is why I'm so passionate about this. That's how deep my people pleasing went that I would take loans just because I couldn't say no. I would take loans to help out people, whether friends or family. I just got that bad. And then when it came time to pay them, I saw I paid them by myself. Nobody came and was like, hey, let me give you this towards it or considered it. But I just could not say no. And it, it just, your mental quality, the quality of your life, your mental health is destroyed. I can't stress enough how people pleasing can make you go insane. You can lose everything. I was depressed. I was like overworking, burnt out to just keep up that hamster wheel. And it came to a point I'm like, no, I don't care. I'm not, and you know those same people that I was their first person to call? Now I'm not, they figured it out. Things that I they thought they wouldn't even figure out, I thought they'd never figure out without me, that they need me to survive. They figured it out, they figured it out. People's brains don't work when you're constantly, imagine if you have a kid, you don't ever let them walk until they're an adult. You just keep picking them up. You don't teach them how to brush their teeth, to do things. You don't potty train them. They're, you're stunting their growth. But once you allow people to use their brains to figure things out, guess what? They will, they will. People will use their brains. They will figure it out. You have to step away and let people figure it out. You can't hold people's hands. I used to be one of those people that was very dependent on certain people too. I was a dependent too. I was that people had to step away from me for me to figure it out, <laughs> vice versa. But if someone was helping me, I was mooching off of them. They weren't, you know, stopping me. I was gonna let you. There's people in your life that push you, that tells you, hey, you could do more than this. You can, you can push through your potential. You can do this. Like I have my, a lot of people in my life, you know, a lot of family too, that pushed me to do more, to to be and then there were some that just never never but then wanted to reap the benefits of the effort that you put forth and I always say I'm not saying to not help people but if you want to do charity and then you don't talk about your charity people I help now things I do I won't brag about it I won't and this is why a lot of people that have a little something they don't even have to be rich they don't brag anymore they don't post their trip like you even scared to vlog. Do not want people to know what you have so that they don't think, oh, look at her, look at her doing this. So she got it like that. Let me, you know, like you're scared to do anything. You, you alone know the nights that you spent blood, sweat, and tears, working, staying up late, doing all you gotta do. You alone know that, okay? They don't, they weren't there with you shooting in the gym. <laughs> But here they do, they want a handout. I'm telling you guys, and it's not just that, it's emotional handout. Emotionally, they wanna drain you for therapy, therapeutic advice all the time. They want you to get them out of their rut and they're never there for you. And they manipulate you into being there. Oh, you're the best to ever do it. That's another thing, over complimenting, love bombing, because they need something. Um, and I know people that do that. I never, You never hear the word I love you from them, but then they need some, all of a sudden I love you. How many of y'all got a parent like that? I done spoke and given advice to so many people with parents like that. It's sad. Like, Kareen, I never heard I love you from my mom. She never used to hug me or anything. The minute 
I got this job and then I started helping out all of a sudden my daughter my love but she won't talk to none of my other siblings just me I'm sorry if you're going through this so many people go through this they love bomb you they over compliment you tell you how smart you are because they know what they want from you and they flatter you and they think you're not smart enough to figure it out I am so sorry but you have to you have to wake up and see the light you have to wake up and see the light I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in this is all I have for the video comment below any other ways that you know people gaslight people <laughs> I will talk to you guys soon in the next video. And if you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. Support my brother. Until next time. Mwah.